Okay, so uh, the agenda for this part is about easy. So an overview of the Cube ecosystem, then an overview of the Azure RTOS and uh, the integration of the Azure RTOS on our Cube. Okay, so let's start uh, understanding. I think you know already, but in case uh, you don't, okay, a quick introduction. So what is uh, uh, the STM32 Cube software suite? Okay, it is uh, uh, basically a collection of uh, tools and embedded software, and the tools are meant to guide you from the configuration of your project uh, up uh, to the monitoring on the field of your project. Okay, so this is uh, the aim of our tools. And uh, this process started uh, uh, in 2014 when we released our first package of the software suite. And so far, we have uh, more than 7 billion STN32 units worldwide that are using these tools. This in order to say that we got a lot of experience uh, over uh, the, last, uh, uh, the last years in order to improve the quality and getting all the feedbacks uh, from the field, we changed, we upgraded and we upgrade uh, roughly in a quarterly based uh, the release uh, of this software in order to improve the quality, to let uh, it uh, to be easy to use and of course to upgrade it for the new MCU that we release every year. So starting from the CubeMX, the CubeMX is a graphical configuration tool where you can select your MCU. When you have selected the MCU, you can address all the hardware features of the MCU itself. You can configure the meaning of each pin, the behavior of each peripheral, but not only, okay? You can also touch everything that is connected to the middleware, or you can install additional expansions for your project. The main idea of CubeMX is that with a few clicks and in a graphical way, you set up the configuration of your system, of your project, and then you can generate the initialization code for your project. A CubeMX generates code for CubeADI, that is our ADI, and for IR, for instance, or Kyle. So it's not only meant to work in ST only, but also for additional platforms. Uh, the good uh, idea behind the CubeMX is that uh, uh, when you generate a project, uh, you can always go back to the uh, graphical interface in order to add modification to your code, to the setup of your platform, in order to adapt your platform uh, during the development. So if you need to change any I.O., if you will need to add any package, you can do it still preserving uh, the application that you have written in the ADI. And then we have the ADI, okay? The Cube ADI instead is our common place where the CubeMX, the, so the config, graphical configuration tool, the, um, the development tool where you can really uh, type your code, test and debug your code, and the programmer are all together, okay? So the Cube ADI is a complete software suite that can guide you from the beginning up to the debug of your application. Of course, as I said before, you can use our ADI or you can use our ADE, excuse me, or the ADE that you are happy to use, like a YAR, for instance. Then we have the programmer. The programmer, of course, is needed to upload in a secure way the program on your MCU, and you can use it to program your, your system. Last but not least, and we have a dedicated slide at the end, is the monitoring. Monitoring uh, that is uh, uh, provided by the Cube Monitor is a way to monitor in a real time and non intrusive uh, uh, way your application also in the field. And this is a way to have a touch on uh, variables, uh, memory portion of your project, of your program running on the target uh, in a release way, not in a, in a debug way, uh, in a non intrusive way in order to monitor the functionalities and typically meant for the bug, but also for other functionalities such as triggering of algorithms or stuff like that. We will see later.
Then in terms of uh, uh, software, uh, we pro provide the software packages that are meant to support uh, a given uh, series. Okay, so you have packages for each of the series that we provide. And then there are also expansions uh, pack that are meant to provide additional functionalities uh, that you could need on your application. Uh, for instance, uh, an EEPROM uh, emulation. Okay, you have the expansion pack uh, for, for it. So, uh, talking about the middleware in where instead, um, this is uh, our offering so far uh, since 2021. Uh, that is basically the freer TOS, uh, that is the operating system, uh, in pair with uh, additional middlewares, typically for FAT file system, for TCP IP stack, and for the USB library, okay? So this is uh, uh, what you should be happy to see in our offering. Now let's see how the situation changed. And the main aim of the meeting uh, today um, talking about the middleware, we uh, added uh, or we uh, complemented our uh, offering uh, thanks to the Azure RTOS. Now, Azure RTOS uh, is not only the, uh, the operating system itself, that instead uh, is the ThreadX, okay? So the Azure RTOS ThreadX is the real operating system. While when we talk about Azure RTOS, we talk not only about the operating system, okay, so the kernel of the system, but also about uh, additional packages that are in this case, and what we embraced uh, so far are the FileX for, uh, in order to manage the, the file system, NetX and NetX Duo for TCP IP uh, version 4 and version 6, and also the USB X for host and device USB application. Okay, so when we talk about uh, in ST and in our offering about Azure TOS, it means that we are referring to all these uh, offerings. Okay, what are the benefits? Why we did uh, this step forward? Okay, because basically Azure TOS is meant to provide uh, best performances in terms of execution and in terms of uh, uh, footprint because it's by architecture is meant to be uh, ready for embedded system. And this means that uh, in terms of footprint and in terms also of uh, content, uh, content switch, it is really designed for embedded application, providing very fast uh, or very, very nice performances. It is a complete and consistent uh, solution. Uh, why? As we have seen on the uh, slide before, Azure RTOS is not only the kernel, but it also provides a lot of packages, okay, meant for different needs. And uh, it is consistent because uh, the API style, the documentation, the philosophy, and the architecture that is uh, behind all the, uh, the packages is exactly the same. So when you have learned how to use or what is the philosophy behind an API, you can retrieve and find exactly the same philosophy across all the APIs uh, that, are, uh, that are meant for the different packages. And uh, uh, last but not least, this is of course not a ranking in terms of uh, priority. Um, what is really important is, uh, is about the uh, certifications. Uh, we can see in a slide that is coming a uh, certification about uh, safety and uh, security. So what are the key features? As I said, this is a, an industrial grade, uh, especially talking about the networking. So it is ready for many IoT protocols. And uh, as we will see later, we support already a lot of additional protocols on top of the standard TCP IP networking protocol. It provides uh, a full system fault tolerant, uh, meant for SD, NAND, NOR, uh, and so on. So already available. Uh, for the USB is an Austin device, uh, and, and it is of course provided with many classes uh, already uh, available for you. And it comes uh, from Microsoft, okay, already pre-certified for safety and security. And here you can find some uh, of the industrial and the automotive and the medical class that you can achieve, okay? So it can go up to the C4 or class C for medical, 
or up to SLD for automotive. Of course, we don't have uh, STN32 automotive so far, okay? But this is in, in order to provide you uh, the, the feeling, okay? How this uh, uh, suite uh, is, uh, uh, is mature for uh, both safety and security. About security, instead, uh, uh, for TLS and DTLS uh, is up to EL4+. Plus. And uh, talking about uh, software crypto library is FIPS uh, um, 140. That this is typically needs for medical application because the operating system is very good. But when you have to debug and you have uh, to, to trace what happened, it could be uh, difficult if you don't have uh, uh, right tools in order to see the progress of uh, each task. Uh, the uh, each hippo or everything that is connected to the communication queue, semaphore, and stuff like that. Okay, so it provides a very nice uh, tracing and debugging capability. And the guy in uh, in during the technical session will show you uh, what this uh, means. Uh, last but not least, uh, uh, it is completely free when you work with the STN32. Okay, so basically you don't have no nothing, anything to pay is something like embedded on the usage of the STN32. Just to give you a uh, quick information, I wanted to go about fast on these slides, uh, but the idea when we talk about uh, uh, the point that uh, the uh, Azure RTOS is meant for embedded application in terms also of footprint, you can see the kernel can goes uh, down to 2K byte uh, of flash, okay, in its minimal uh, footprint. And uh, uh, we have the, a sub microsecond context switch, as I said, that is uh, able to provide a lot of performances. In terms of safe and security, we just talk about that. And it also provides additional benefit versus a standard operating system uh, that is uh, some uh, over the other uh, preemption threshold. Uh, you can, so you can trigger the preemption. Uh, you can uh, uh, put in chain events, okay, in order to improve the capability or the speed on how you manage multiple events in a chain and it also auto scaling. Okay, so okay, uh, something that is interesting, but we will touch later, is the possibility to have uh, some abstraction layer for free RTOS. So for whom is able to use free RTOS, you have something like uh, a parser or an abstraction that allows you to still keep your free RTOS APIs still working on uh, an Azure or an ThreadX environment. This is for USB X. I don't want to go, but what is important here to, to see is the amount of classes that are already available for you. Okay, don't want to enter in the details here. You have these slides, so you can read by uh, yourself. This is the NetX uh, instead uh, uh, duo, that is EPAP v4 and v6 uh, stack. What is important for you instead in this slide, on top of the small, uh, because 50k byte for such a kind of uh, stack is um, something that is really interesting, but what I want or where I'd like to have your attention is exactly on the additional networking layers on top of the TCP IP stack that are needed for any kind of uh, networking application. So we can notice MQTT, a co-IAP, and everything that is absolutely common, DHCP, NAT, uh, SNMP, uh, and so on, okay? Uh, DNS, MDNS. So these are already available for you, part of the package and mandatory for any kind of um, application talking about networking. Um, there is also the file X in order to manage the file system. So we support uh, all basically the standard, uh, the standard FAT, including the extended FAT, and this is uh, uh, license free for usage on the STN32. Okay, uh, what is the delivery model of the Azure uh, RTOS? Okay, we have to distinguish uh, in two basically uh, main session. If we talk about uh, um, MCU already available in, in our portfolio, Okay, and in MCU that are coming or very new in our portfolio. For everything that is uh, already available in the market, that is uh, in a recent, uh, added recently on our portfolio, what we provide are extension package. Okay, so you can upload, uh, you can get the extension package for your MCU, in this case H7, F4, L4, 
and other. And we, we have a slide uh, right after describing what are the packages available. And so you can then uh, use Cubemix to configure everything. OK, so the main point is that you have the standard tools. You have to uh, download uh, the extension of the middleware and then you can work on uh, with the Cubemx and all the tools that we uh, have talked before. Uh, what are the packages available today? OK, basically, uh, as you can see, this slide is talking about November Q4, December Q4, meaning that uh, within this year, you will have all these uh, MCUs supported uh, um, where, for, for which you can have uh, uh, the Azure Airtos uh, extension package uh, to use. OK, so what is really interesting in this slide is first, you can easily understand that from an H7, uh, so M7, 500 megahertz, you can use the Azure TOS up to a Cortex M0 plus 64 megahertz. So this is really interesting because it's going to create a way to migrate your project across a very large product portfolio. And what is also interesting is uh, that we are ready to deploy Azure Atos also for the wireless MCUs for the sub giga and the 2.4 giga and everything will happen within this year. OK. Next is instead about the new MCUs that we uh, already released. U5, for instance, has been released in September and for everything that is coming. In this case, you will not need to download an extension package, but uh, the Azure Atos will be part of the SDK, will be part of the cube package for that MCU. OK, so alongside with any peripheral driver uh, examples and so on, you will have also the Azure Atos available in a single package. As I said before, this is our offering uh, so far. So not only the Tradex, OK, uh, with all the examples for the creation, synchronization, message queue and so on. We also provided the wrappers that I have said before. So wrappers for free RTOS uh, CMCs, uh, meaning that if you are happy to use a free RTOS or a CMCs uh, language, you can still leverage on this way to write uh, uh, your code. OK, so is a, in order to have a very seamless migration to Azure Atos. Then talking about the USB X, we have, of course, we are talking about USB. So we have a host and device and we provide also examples for all these classes. So if you have a mass storage, you have the classes you have. A, if you need a human uh, interface, you have it and so on. OK, so those are already examples available for you. Talking about instead of the TCP IP, uh, we have uh, again the server and the client. Uh, we have TCP and UDP examples and we have also uh, standard examples that you can easily use, uh, such as a web server, MQTT client, uh, network uh, uh, time protocol client uh, and uh, uh, other examples already available. And instead, uh, last, uh, uh, talking about uh, FileX, uh, you have additional examples how to easy access uh, to your memory and uh, the file system. OK, we already touched this, uh, so we can skip uh, uh, easily this slide. OK, um, the CubeMX, uh, as we uh, as I said before, OK, is meant uh, in this case uh, to uh, import uh, a package, OK, or also to create a package. The package creator is really interesting because uh, it allows you to create uh, new packages that you can or you could reuse inside your company, uh, for instance, because you have made a package that can be used across uh, multiple projects on your system, or you can also create packages to be shared with the community. Uh, why not? OK, or also uh, sold as uh, professional services. Uh, as I said, the CubeMX is a graphical uh, user configuration tool. Everything is made in a graphical way, and you, we have also a different uh, um, different workshop and webinar ready or coming uh, uh, describing how to use uh, for different use cases, including also configuration of uh, uh, Bluetooth low energy, for instance, 
uh, in a graphical, in a full graphical configuration way. And then uh, you have the uh, code generation. So CubeMX uh, at the end of the process uh, create a code for you that you can uh, use uh, with your IDE or with our IDE. Cube ADE, uh, ADE instead uh, is uh, uh, the ST, as I said, uh, free of charge, and it provides to first, as I said, include the CubeMX so you, you can configure uh, your, uh, the platform. You have the uh, code development, so everything needed. Cube ADI is based on uh, um, Eclipse and GCC as a compiler. Uh, you can debug and programming, and then you can, and this is what uh, we are going to see today, you can fully debug uh, uh, your operating system. Okay, so you can have uh, full awareness about the thread, about the mutex, about the queue, about what happened uh, talking about an operating system. Last, uh, uh, but really not least, is the cube monitor. Uh, let me spend a couple of words about the cube monitor. As I said, this is a non-intrusive tool. What is the, the, the main uh, target of cube monitor? When you have released uh, um, a software, okay, and you have, for instance, a bug uh, that happens uh, after days of working, okay, and it is very hard to be replicated uh, at the desk. Uh, so typically what a, a technical guy do is adding a lot of tracing code uh, in order to try to understand, to trace uh, the, the flow of the bug. And typically, if, for instance, we are talking about memory issues, uh, the fact that you are adding a code uh, is, can move, okay, or can also uh, hide completely the bug itself. Now, the cube monitor is instead is a non-intrusive, meaning that you don't need to add a line of codes in your application, and the cube monitor is able, in a graphical way, to show uh, variables, uh, portion of RAM and stuff like that, and also take action uh, when something happened, okay? So it's a really interesting graphical way to interact uh, with uh, your application in order to trace uh, variables uh, meant for debug or meant in order to improve the quality, for instance, of some, uh, of some uh, algorithm when you have the, a tracing over uh, some, uh, some days of activity. Is a drag and drop, as I said, is a graphical tool, already a lot of widget ready, so you, you can leverage on a, a very nice uh, also uh, look and feel. Uh, it is based on red node, uh, so you can really create a, a complex uh, decision uh, flow in order to alert or to do something when there are multiple conditions happening. And uh, really, this is super interesting, that you can use these uh, in a remote way, meaning that you can have your board, uh, your hardware and software in the field, and you can use uh, a tunnel through internet to your board to monitor what happened in your hardware. And uh, I think this is uh, all for myself. I think that you enjoy this part, and now uh, let's go directly to the technical part,